So I, I have to say, and anyway, go ahead. Hello? We're live. I keep telling Eric to stop beating the shit out of those homeless dogs, but he won't stop. He just won't Speaking stop of killing dogs, them. You two he covers himself in ketchup, and then he runs down the alleyway screaming like a little goblin. And then he turns on them, and the dogs just keep coming because they don't know any better. And I think it's time we had an intervention, Eric. Because those chihuahuas have had enough. So, hello everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Real Estate. You two wouldn't stop talking about corn dogs. So I went we can only batter so food. many dog penises for Eris to eat before the people get suspicious. <laughs> I needed to eat one. Oh. Full of protein, fiber, marabone jelly. <laughs> Red number five. You too can have a right. thick coat like Eris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. A thick what? Okay. Beard? All right. So, coat. Oh, coat. what I was going to say, right, when David decided to hit the play button on the stream <laughs> was that despite the fact that I am going to try very hard to come to CitizenCon, it's not guaranteed yet. 
Okay. So we'll see. I have a thing at, with work that I literally like straight up, no questions asked, cannot miss. So it's sort of like, oh. well, if that if that happens, then then there's no way I can go. So yeah, Fuck. that's shit. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't happen at that time, but you know. Hey, Mazer, it is. how's it going? I um. Oh, I love all of the artificial colorings. Um, yes. Especially the ones that make your tongue various colors for hours on end. I, my favorite coloring actually is uh, blue yep, raspberry. there he is. I got him. <laughs> I thought of the most inappropriate joke, and I'm like, oh, there's, there's no way I can ever tell a living soul this joke ever. And I'm like, I'm a horrible human being. Where's Fastcar? He'll like this. I'll tell him that. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. Oh. So, David, how are you doing? I'm like tired. Thank you. This is actually one of the only green shirts that I own. That really looks black Isn't it... on stream. I know. Isn't it missing a few words? I want to believe. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. I'm, I'm so glad you're <laughs> here, Eric. I know I can rely on you for my fucking nerdy shit. No, I'm pretty sure <sighs> that's like iced tea or something, but for a moment, I, I thought that was like a, a huge bottle of like rum. <laughs> I wish it was. Believe me, <laughs> your maple syrup. <laughs> I had a five hour uh, drive earlier today, and I'm tired. Yes, you did. Came all the way from the big place. Rana. Yep. Rana. Anyway, yep. I'm home now. You drove I'm a piranha? Yes, you drove a piranha. I suppose it's They're hard to drive. Lighter. They're hard to drive because they don't have wheels, but, you know, the chomping sort of makes them go down the road. I imagine there's a whole series of problems as well, Eric. Not just the fact that they lack <laughs> wheels. I imagine that's quite low down on the list, but it's certainly a contribution, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Aren't you glad you're watching this, mate? <laughs> oh, I know. I'm going to tune in for some Star Citizen content. I'll go to Relay. They're fucking reliable. <laughs> <laughs> since when? Uh, oh, since nine years man. ago. You know, I saw the story about about relay nine years ago. What's that? Well, I can recall, hang, and I was thinking on. about was this. Relay here nine was relay here nine years no. ago. No, it was INN. INN but... was here. Okay, okay. I wanted that. That would have done my head in then. It's like no. So no, INN was months. nine years ago, but I mean, I, Relay is just INN, but we have Rebad the keys. and reskin. <laughs> <laughs> and still alive. Um, nine years ago, I was driving my ex's um, furniture. It's not quite a in, Jaguar. It, I was driving her furniture no, in a moving song. truck. <laughs> oh, I, right, just, I can't. With hey, you people, how David, the fuck you can do you not going. know that song? <laughs> Nine years ago, I was driving my ex's furniture in a moving truck from where I picked it up at her parents' place in Toronto. <laughs> you, I, I sure hope you know what you're getting at this point, Mazer. And thank you for sticking with us for whatever. Weird reason. Um, anyway, I was driving all of her furniture from her parents' place in Toronto, where I had gone alone to pick it all up, because she stayed in Ottawa. Um, and I was driving in a moving truck with the furniture in the back on a phone call to INN to do a podcast and we did an episode of the podcast yes we did I remember while that i was driving down the 401 yeah. in ottawa we were recording a podcast 
And yep. I don't know, I was thinking about that today, doing that same drive, being like, you know, <laughs> things have changed slightly. It's not the same talking to yourself if I'm not recording it. <laughs> oh, no, it's yeah. just, I had, you know, emo teenager on one side under a like under her coat on her phone for you know three hours to drive and my son on the other side screaming and not being able to work his tablet enough and it was uh, just a much different drive <laughs> yeah so, i mean the first time around i was the one screaming at you it's true <laughs> you hear you hear these stories from parents, right? And parents, well, parents like, oh, they're so proud of their kids, and like, you understand that, you get that, you get. It. But from the outside looking in, right? You know, he's telling you about this, this drive, and you're in a moving vehicle, and you've got this picture in your head. If if you don't have kids, and it, you know, all right, yeah, I can make the best of this. Like, I could put the colonel's bucket there. I could have me road beers there, and this could be quite a nice drive. All right, yeah, I can get into this. I can get into this. And he describes the children being there, and it's like this fucking moody, you know, fucking hate you. But can we have this? I want a pony. And then this other kid just like, it's not working, just screaming all the way. And he's just there, like, oh, this is great. I'm going to get all my friends to turn to have kids. Oh, oh, no. maybe if I just swing the van over to the left and die in a fiery Oh no, it'll all be over! No sugar. I don't and I'm just there, like, anyone. you know, fried chicken, beer. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a bit I, of a piss of this, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't actually recommend that anyone have children because children are genuinely a nightmare. And unless you really, really, really want a 24 7 nightmare for the next 20 plus years of your life. I mean, I'm you know, sat here, I'm really like, trying to think of like some fun. at least sarcastic, yeah, but at least Let's talk about uh, At season. least you got a At least you got a cheap alternative to turkey at Christmas <laughs> Eating your children? <laughs> what? <laughs> mm-hmm <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's not. I'm, I'm it's not, not legal. Well, I'm not sure how. I'm not sure how um, cheap it is to end up in prison for 25 years. <laughs> Only if they catch you, and who's gonna know? <laughs> They're your kids. I must admit, I haven't given full thought to my recipe book, <laughs> but it is in the early stages. <laughs> oh dear. Um, you wait until so, you hear about. Can we even see the train van. tracks from here? Or like, <laughs> well, you know, so we've I'd derailed, be... and we're now going through a farmer's field. <laughs> you know, I'd love Can't to do a segue because I don't know what we're opening with. I'd love to continue yeah, this talk, to. this conversation about eating children, but I think I'm going to move <laughs> us over to Star Citizen because. We I don't think you need a problem. reason. I don't need a reason. <laughs> Fuck I it. I wish I need a people would not repeat back to me the things that I say to them <laughs> because it makes me feel it makes me feel the same way that everyone else is looking at me when I say these things. <laughs> and I'm not sure I should be in on this on the joke on that side of it or not. And I <laughs> Um, oh therapist, God. you know, it's getting expensive. <sighs> it would be some modest proposal. Oh. <laughs> oh. Look. Um, hey, my trucker, you gave me a good time. <laughs> hey, my trucker. Uh, horrible timing, but um, look, I'm going to tell another story because I feel like it, and then we're moving on. But this is this is an on-topic story on the subject of eating children. Topic. The, okay. the what topic? topic? Of eating children. Hold That's on, sure. Let me tell the story. Also, you, and the overlay is a bit balked. You've got to put the you want to put the alerts, by the way, at the very top because it's being obscured by the podcast pod sat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll look oh, at that. that that word salad logo. Let's see if. 
fast as anybody. Anyway, we'll figure that out. Um, what I was gonna say, actually, what I should, yeah, let's we'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> years ago, in high school, we were given a a group project in I think it was either history or social studies, one of those courses. And the task was to come up with a new form of government. Like, you know, communism, democracy, come up with your Haven't own new form of government. we heard this story a couple of times? Possibly. I've only got three stories and I tell them on repeat. Anyway, uh, my group and I decided okay. that the best way to run a country would be, first off, the ruler of the country is whomever could drink the most mercury and survive. Ooh, I like um, that. That's how you choose your leader. So your leader is going um, to be, be insane by definition. Yes. Whomever didn't drinks the most... Didn't ancient China do something similar and it didn't work out very well? Yes, it did. Kind of. Maybe. <laughs> Um, but then uh, the entire economy of our of our country was to be based on um, children, and children were to do all of the labor, and then as they died, our economy was supposed to be built upon their bones, and also we would eat them. Um, and that was our that was our uh, our you know our proposition in this How did class, adults and and we got an A plus on it. Wow. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but I want to buy your Metal Concept <laughs> album. When is it on sale, please? <laughs> All right. Star Citizen. Here we go. Oh, um, my God. We've, we've actually got gonna a lot to talk about. The start of this podcast is going to come in a court case at some point. <laughs> you know, Cass oh, has don't, for... Don't. Cass has for a couple of years been telling me that I'm not allowed to go into politics. And, you know, she's actually fairly safe because if I ever tried, all anyone would have to do is <laughs> yes, look up this podcast this and I'd be fucked. Yeah. Right fucked. Totally. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, Star Citizen, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about this week in Star Citizen. Yes, there is. Is there anything to talk about before we get to the videos, or should we just go to the videos? Oh, uh, CitizenCon, the CitizenCon so, dates were No, I were can't announced. say that. Uh, it's what, the ninth, is it the 19th and 20th of October in Manchester? Oops, press that. Those I don't know why dates, you're right? asking, I literally messaged you the other day saying, hey, look... I don't know how to tell the t time on a fucking <laughs> daily, monthly basis. Can you, like, tell me shit, and I'll just throw money at the screen and, you know... It's okay, Shiver. I was, I was asking maybe our I'll... viewers, because they're mm. smarter than us. No, they're watching us. <laughs> There's something that's gone wrong here. Uh, Although it could watched... be like that car accident thing, you know, it's have like when everyone just slows wreck? down, it's like, you know... Yeah. yeah, that's that's it. That's great. Um, yeah, so yo, I know so I'm tell going. me about this VIP party. How how you know uh, how much coke is there? I don't know. Or is it Dr Pepper? You're you're gonna have to um, no, it's, spend it's the group, extra quid. Here. You'd have to spend the extra quid. Go and find out. Well, oh, okay. So it, in seriousness, what actually is it? What is it? I think it's probably just a. What do I get? What? What? It's, I just it's like, like the... I'm literally like I. My awareness of VIP stuff is there is a VIP party on the 18th because Daj has been fucking good enough to tell me something. There is and he's a not VIP party in real time. I don't think there really are details, Shiver. There's a VIP party no, on the 18th. Like, uh, it's probably like they they do every year or have done in previous years where the devs get together with a bunch of fans at a bar. Uh, but they've also probably, they've gotten, it's not probably, they've gotten too big for it to be just a free-for-all. So they are, my assumption is that they are now charging for admission to this 
because there's no way that they because like in in previous years it was just yeah whoever wants to show up shows up and we go to a bar and that's not happening anymore uh so i think it's just the less formal drink with i'm kind of pick the dance if you seen so, the most recent jurassic park film no no i'm kind of picturing they they auction off the dinosaurs and all the dinosaurs are in these like fucking glass cases so they can't get out i'm kind of picturing that you know all these star citizen people who paid for vip coming up in like tux and dressed up as an avenger walking through and there's just these devs in glass cases and they're just like yes yes perform for me tell me tell me ship things i'm pretty sure it's not going to be quite like that here is the oh, entirety oh. of here's the entirety of what we know. It's one sentence. It says, "Please note, there will be an additional offsite event with extremely limited availability happening on October 18th. More information will come at a later date." Yes. That's it. Please please note that everything I have said is my assumptions based on uh previous years. Yeah. Uh I yeah. will also say that based on my previous experience at one of those, I had a poopy experience. And I'm gonna not go. Was that a but VIP thing? Essentially, I thought yeah. it was just a general event. No, oh, it was at oh, the okay, like. Okay. It was at the. I don't remember if it was after the event or when. To be honest, it was before. It was before. It was before. Yeah. Yeah, it was before. So, um, regardless, anyway, um, so regardless, Citizen Con, Citizen Con. Is October nineteenth and twentieth. So if you go to Citizen Con in person, you get to wear a monocle. If you go to the VIP party as well, you get two monocles to wear. Yeah, they call cool them monocles. No, monocles. Bi Bionicles, Bionicles yep. Um, okay. Was there anything else news this week? No. So we actually missed last week's videos as well. Uh, yes. because we missed last week. So we're going to talk about last week's episode of uh, ISC, and then we're going to talk about this week's episode. So last week's episode was focused in, excuse me, uh, entirely on sort of some updates on the, um, the distribution centers that they talked about at CitizenCon and sort of what we can expect from the distribution centers. And it sounded honestly kind of cool. Um... There's going to, uh, I don't know, I don't know how we do this, but basic rundown, there's a bunch of them. Uh, there's a bunch of different opportunities for jobs in them, good, bad, you name it. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to get in. There's, you know, some of them will be hostile to you right at the outset. Some of them you can go and get jobs from there. They just sound like large locations for gameplay uh, and a varied um, amount of gameplay and I also th seemed to I don't remember what the exact number was uh, but I it sort of sounds like there aren't going to be too many of them in order to I don't think there will ever be that many of them because they're pretty huge so yeah but I, I, and I think part of the reason of that is to uh, push players together, right? If you've only got, you know, one of these on a planet, well, all the players around that planet are going to be um, arriving that, you know, uh, concentrating around that distribution center. So it gives more opportunities for, you know, the cargo hauler who is just there doing cargo missions to have a run-in with the uh, pirates that are, you know, breaking in hostile-wise and stealing stuff, and, you know, more emergent gameplay is possible. Uh, Darj, thank you. So there's going to be 13 in the first release. Um, Excellent, thank you for the number. It's actually a much bigger yeah. number than I expected. <clears throat> and it's, you know... Everything they went over sounds pretty good for the first release. Uh, I think that, again, it's they're still so limited by the server tech. And right now, these aren't going to be that impressive, honestly, in, in my opinion. Um, it's when server, like, player counts start going up and we get, you know, 
good AI. couple hundred good AI and you know a couple hundred players on a server, then the distribution centers are going to get interesting. Because you will still have like all the other little like the the outposts, right? Those are still going to exist. Lots of people are still going to use those for missions, but what was they, they said they're working on raid content for like end game stuff and lots of that's probably going to or some of that at least is probably going to focus around these distribution centers so it's going to be an interesting yeah. uh interesting places and yeah it's also another piece of the puzzle in the whole logistical side of star citizen as well as as you say it is quite limited right now in what it can do but take it each step at a time of this area here now and then hopefully they're already in the process of making it so as you know as long as what they have now can communicate together maybe they'll stick a few on um the same planet just to start off with just to see how the communication is because you don't need um server meshing if it's on the same planet yeah and if it's working on the same planet then they're like okay we know it works like this. If it doesn't work when server meshing is in and it's, you know, the logistics network have got to talk over systems, then they'd be like, well, we know it works. Why isn't it working here? Let's have a look. Yeah. You've got to throw I, shit at the wall to see what sticks to start. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think there's... <sighs> It's hard to say around Stanton because it's been developed piecemeal, right? They were like, oh, we finally, we've got outposts working. Let's just add them to planets. Oh, we've got caves here. We start at, like, it would be nice if, one, if they go back and, and you know, rejigger things around Stanton. But it feels like these distribution centers should be the center of a web of outposts. Mm -hmm. right and you start having either like uh air or even ground you know shipments that go from the distribution center to these outposts maybe those shipments can be you know interrupted by pirates mid-flight like there's a lot that they can do with these centers especially as they as they fill them out more so I mean, we're not going to get that in the first release, but it's not really nice to see larger gameplay areas. Um, mm -hmm. the, I think one of my most disappointing things in the game at this point... Yeah, trains. I'd love to see trains going between them. Honestly, that would be great. Um, that would be I've always, Yeah. I've always hated the outposts that you get into the elevator and it starts going down and it's like first basement one and then you clear basement one and there's no basement two or three or f like it's just the one. It's just the one. Even floor, even actually. worse when you go when you go look down the ele elevator, there are more floors and you can never get to them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's going to be nice to have a larger, a larger playground. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, this is a place where you could have a mission that could last for like a couple hours. Yeah. Potentially, it's huge. They're huge, and um. I think that they really tie in. It, they provide this tie-in for the economy, um, <clears throat> where um, you can have a lot of players and NPCs delivering things to the to yeah. this location. So you get a lot of emergent gameplay around pirates trying to intercept those shipments, as you talked about, both from players and from NPCs, and then. Um, you also have this place where there is a lot of stuff. So even players will just be want to want to be like, "Hey, I just want to go b steal a bunch of shit." You know, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff there. Well, um, and so one of the things, yeah, and one of the things they were talking about in the episode was, you know, there's going to be, you know, assassination missions, for example, right? Yeah. Now, that's cool and all, but. I kind of like the idea of starting to like wrap together multiple mission types. So you go here and one, can I get in? 
Can I have, you know, an assassination mission? But can I take a delivery mission to get in? Can I take a non-hostile delivery mission and fly my ship in land and start delivering cargo as a legitimate reason to be at the location and then go in? And once you're in, one, right? But also once you're in, like, assassination is great, but can it be assassination, you know, grab a key code from the person you've assassinated, make your way down into the bowels, steal some boxes, you also have to steal some vehicles, and then you've got to get out via, like, like there's, like, there's just so much that they can do with it, and I'm I'm excited to see it. That's where that's where I was talking. Like you can end up with um with like multi with like a couple hour long mission in there, it, like multi stage missions that take you deeper and deeper into the facility, and then have you trying to get the hell out at the end. Which is uh, yeah, no, it, it it provides some very interesting uh, opportunities for them. And um, I uh, along with the rest of the things that we're getting in the next patch, it's going to be uh, pretty fun. I think. The next patch is really big, monumentally like, huge. Yeah, like kind of, kind of crazy, actually. Um, was there anything else from the distribution centers? Shiver, any last thoughts on distribution centers? I'm afraid not. No, oh, okay. that was good. <laughs> I don't get it. What a miss. That's that's fine. You don't have to get it. <laughs> uh, he said, I'm a freight, not. Oh, a freight. I heard afraid. <laughs> okay. That was good. Yeah. Um, Tipitarius, people are mad about the, uh, the distribution centers because they're going to have both PvP and PvP in the same place. Well, Okay. The the outposts <laughs> currently have PvP and PvE in this like. Well, it, it, isn't that kind of the whole game? Yeah. yeah. I I mean, don't Not get me virtual, wrong. I, I know, but I'm I'm still slightly annoyed that they uh, got rid completely of the idea of the um, the slider, the yeah the yeah. PvP slider. Like I. I genuinely don't hmm. want to PvP, and I think it's going to suck. Um, but I'm, it's not going to stop me from going to the distribution center, and if someone comes to the distribution center and kills me... Um, we'll kill them right shit. back, David. I don't, I don't think it is going to suck, because, you know, in the same breath that they've taken it away, they have said they don't want uh, the same sort of cutthroat atmosphere as eve yes so it's but who knows the problem is right now the way the game works it sucks because you die you essentially lose all your stuff there's no real way of getting it back you're spawning probably up back on another planet like there's the game systems aren't really there yet to make dying fun <laughs> they're not and and honestly challenge like, accepted well one of the big problems is okay i've i've died i was on this mission i was you know i'm a single player in my aurora and i got here to deliver a box to make some money and there were some asshole pvpers that killed me and now my ship is gone all my stuff is gone I'm back at, you know, Microtech, because that's where I spawned, and fuck, right? And that's, I, that isn't fun. But we're going to see how, we, we have to see how often that happens. And it's probably going to happen a lot right now, but especially as, you know, law systems and reputation get more enforced and built in, People aren't going to do that just for shits and giggles because it's going to fuck with them. It's going to fuck with their reputation. They hopefully, it sounds like CIG want people who do that to have a fucking hard time dealing with it and dealing with the repercussions, right? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, no, you're you're right, Mazer. Like, why didn't you bring friends is not a solution. Um, I've told this story before, and I'll tell it again. Uh, my wife and I play games together all the time. We were playing Amazon's New World, which was, you know, fairly standard MMO. It's fine. Um, except that any of the dungeons required three players. You could not even enter the dungeon if you had less than three players. I got a worse one. Go. Uh, played Star Trek Online uh, first release uh, with my friend. So just just the two of us uh, doing Star Trek Online. We got to the raid content and, you know, it was like, oh, we advise you need three players minimum. We're like, no, fuck you. And we did it. We got through. Except to this point where you literally needed three players to open a console at the same time, yeah. and we didn't have a third person. And we players. eventually yeah. we managed to convince some brands to just come in and press a button, but they couldn't actually enter into the instance we were in because we were too far through the fucking mission. Yeah. Games, it, which this it pisses me off so much and one of the reasons this pisses me off in video games is one of my favorite video game memories is actually dungeons and, Dra dungeons and dragons online which when it first launched uh one of my friends and i uh you know him commander llama uh we created a two party two person party he was a i don't remember if he was a fighter or a barb and i was a cleric and we were at level three able to clear like level six six person dungeons by you know extreme caution and coordination and working through very slowly but we mm -hmm. were able to clear these dungeons that are like yeah this is recommended for you know six level six people and we're two level threes because the game didn't hamper us from not meeting its stupid party requirements it let us do whatever the fuck we wanted and uh, I like that. And, you know, Star Citizen's doing that. Bring as many or as few players as you want. It's not locking anything down behind the number of players. Um, yeah. I don't know. I got nothing else to say about distribution so, centers. I'm just rambling. Just Some the, game um, design's just kind of broken. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Like, I was just going to say, like, that, that thing that happened to you Star Trek Online is straight up bad game, bad gameplay design. That's just bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it, I, it's no, I knew it's, this guy. He <clears throat> was um, playing an MMO. And he figured out that if he um, basically opened a sword shop and undercut <laughs> the rest of the market. <laughs> Never heard of fuck off. Um, um, uh, David. Yeah. Did you know that Dungeons and Dragons Online is still running? I did know that, actually. It's free to play and still running. I actually a, uh, installed it a couple months ago. It has a 2024 development roadmap and everything. Yep. <laughs> it's still going. And it's, I mean, the monetization of it is honestly terrible now, but it's still, yeah. it's like, it did multiplayer MMO gameplay perfectly, in my opinion. There were roles for every classes. There were like, like it was, it was, it was really good. I liked it. Um, and I, th Darsh... I think you'll find that every class has roles in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Shut up. Um, capital ships. You know what? We don't know how much it's going to be able to be done by AI, hired AI. Mm -hmm. um, but also, nothing is in Star Citizen is stopping you from buying a capital ship, even as one person, even and trying to fly it, even if you essentially can't. It's not going to stop you, right? And I don't want it to. I don't want it to say, you are only one person, you cannot board this Idris without a party of six. That's what we don't want. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, that we, mm. they've talked about this before. It's like, you can, like, 
I think the the goal is you can move the ship, but there's so many things that aren't being crewed that it will be almost impossible to run the ship. So, but you could you could I try. Think... Yeah, you I think try. it was the first two Fallout games. It's been a very long time, but I think certainly the second one, if you really played and knew where the boss was, you could just walk straight out oh, and yeah. go straight to the boss. You're gonna yep. die. There's no way you can win that. No way. They did. They it. did that in a lot of the Fallout <laughs> games. It's like if you want to be, if you just want to go straight there, it's fine. Go for yep. it. Yeah, I, I like that. Okay. I think it's you know, it's like eh, no, no. Oh. Um, actually, The Witcher Three did a really good job of that too. Um, there were a few times where I was like really low level and I just like wandered off the beaten path and I was like, oh, that thing's thirty levels above me. Woo! Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. The, uh, but they, then cool? again, that <clears throat> that that's something that some games actually do really poorly, because there's some games that it's like, oh, this enemy has a skull above you, you can't go fight it, and if you try and attack it, oh, you're doing like one damage, like it's it's an yeah. artificial difficulty yeah. because it's four levels above you cannot hurt it rather than no, that's, because... again that sucks yeah you should have, you should be able to do really ridiculous things if a play, as a player if you're good enough um well lucky and actually we'll we'll come back around to that point later on actually actually well, oh are, are we done in the first set of videos yeah we're we're done the first set of videos so we're gonna and i will mention gonna... it so for the this this came up in the second set of videos, uh, which was this week's uh, ISC. But give me um, just a moment to set this up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um, yeah. So one of the things I mentioned in here is that um, you know, like a light fighter won't be able to take down a um, a huge ship um, on their own. It's really not feasible, but using precision targeting they can start slowly taking out the the ship systems which can help the bigger ships um by disabling some of their defenses you know maybe killing some thrusters killing engines you know that type of deal um yeah, i think that's cool or if you're test just using precision targeting to fly your aurora into that turret um Eric, why don't so I actually I took a couple of notes about this episode because there were specific things I wanted to talk about. Look, I prepared, uh, but before we do the notes, uh, Eric, do you want to give a a quick summary of uh, what was discussed in the episode? Uh, yeah, for sure. So there's a lot of things that they covered in this episode, um, but uh, the big ones were. Um, Precision. Uh, sorry, they started off with master modes, uh, talking about uh, the implementation of master modes. So this is going to be like, um, uh, you know, uh, slower speeds for combat and um, and separating out like the mode that your ship is in from combat and from like transit, transiting to another place. Um, and uh, and then they talked about um, archetypes for ships. So once they had that part, they needed to kind of categorize the ships. They did say that the categories are not hard and fast. Some ships don't fall into a category um, perfectly. So they, you know, will need some special attention. Uh, the ones they specifically mentioned were the Cutlass and the Saber. Saber. Yeah. Um... And uh, then we talked a little bit about weapons. So the weapon changes that are that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, so those changes are that they are getting rid of. Um, um, they're getting rid of fixed weapons, um, going to gimbals, um, and this serves the 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 precision targeting system. Um, and then they are also getting rid of the N-1 rule so that gimbals uh, don't have a, have all have sized down weapons, um, which used to be the way it worked. And um, also turrets have gimbals, gimbaled weapons now, um, which is pretty cool. Um, 
and uh and then there's some discussion about formation flying which i think is mostly um you know just oh, much more feasible now that um i don't think there's like a specific system for it but i think it's much more feasible now with the slower slower combat speeds you can actually do formation flying with somebody and not smash into them and i so. th- there is somewhat formation in that you and your friends can all quantum at the same time yeah that that exists for sure but yeah. i think they're talking about fighting information yeah um which yeah, I don't think there's like a solid like, like formation system in that way, but because you're moving much slower, it's way easier to do. Yeah. Um and there's definitely going to be a lot of players who do it because it's probably going to be quite effective. Um Yeah. Um so those were the big ones and then there was a little bit of a nice tidbit at the end. Which was? You'll have to see. Okay. The end of the um, video. So I, I have some questions. First, we're going to talk about the archetypes. What's what's wrong, Shiver? He's teasing me, and I don't like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> First, I want to talk about the archetypes, because I have some questions about the archetypes. Um, first, I want to know if we're going to get to know what the archetype for each ship is. Like, they gave us some examples but is mm-hmm. this going to be like added to concept ships added to the ship store when they release it saying you know this is a light fighter this is a mixed probably light heavy um, they've already sort of they've already talked about that quite a bit in the past my f- my follow on question to that is cuz they were talking about you know ships that aren't necessarily good at any one thing and my question was going to be what is the freelancer going to be because it's not good at uh, hauling cargo it's not good at speed or maneuverability it's not good at firepower because you can't see what you're shooting at it It doesn't is actually really though it doesn't stop it from being good at firepower it's very powerful for its size right darge is right it's the garbage archetype i want to know what's in the garbage archetype i believe the category is ships specifically kept in just to piss eris off (laughs) yep that's the ones um but but seriously i i i want to know what the food answer is uh it would be well whatever the mercantile for, for mercantile ships yeah but they yeah. didn't mention a mercant they didn't mention oh sorry this is, be, this is part sorry, sorry 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 it's gun it's gunship class that's where it was it's in the gunships it shouldn't be gunship because they were saying gunship is connie size or higher they said around connie size didn't they yeah, so, but I don't know. Freelancers I significantly think, smaller. I think than... of the ones they said, it's it's gunship. But that that leads I, to the other I question. think Connie should have a say in this if her height's being questioned. <laughs> <laughs> that leads me to another question, though. Of they mentioned, you know, light fighter, heavy fighter, racer, gunship, um, uh, frigate, frigate, which is Corvette. okay. But what's a hull? What's the hull C? What's a mule? What are the non-combat ships? Well, we'll have to wait in here. I'm just. I'm I know what frigate see... is. That's a good thing you didn't frigate. forget. Frigate is when you just don't give a damn anymore. I knew it. It's waiting for it. All right. Um, but yes, no, it, is, it, is in, good, uh... it, it is a good good question. They did also mention that the archetypes are only a starting position for each ship. It's just sort of a bucket they can put them in, and then they will go into each ship and then ma- fine tune its uh, its um, performance and handling and and feel um, from there as well. Yeah. So it is not it is a beginning place, not an ending place. Um, so they also showed off the precision targeting stuff, which looks kind of cool. Um, I've got many questions about how it's going to work in practice. Like you're zooming in and it's slowing down your rate of fire, but you're able to fire more ra- accurately is what I understand stood. But, um, uh, what were my, I had, so I'll I'll throw it into here, but I've got some questions about the whole weapons rework thing. Uh, the whole 
you know, because of this precision targeting and because they're adding precision targeting, every weapon is going to be gimbaled now. Yep, except for the ones that can't be. Well, what's going to happen to the ones that can't be? They well, they won't be gimbaled. gimbaled. Okay, but how does this work for longer ranged weapons like the um the there are only like three there's only like three weapons in the game that it that it's gonna affect i know but does this because one they are closing the ranges right yep. one of the goals of master modes is to to bring the fighters closer in together and mm -hmm. you're giving gimbals to all of these weapons are you like my question is, are they essentially invalidating the Starfighter, which is supposed like to be that. a long the, the Ion at least is supposed to be a longer ranged fighter, and it's gonna have a hell of a time hitting anything if, like, well, well surely no, I, I, that would be one of those ones that's a special case where it's like, well, we can't make a sniper gun useless, and even if, you know, even if the goal with that is to bring you closer, eliminating the point of being a sniper, you wouldn't be able to use the damn thing very effectively in an actual dogfight, because while you're trying to move the entire ship to get, um, oh, whatever the fucking term is, that I know Dodge knows and someone's going to say the thing, um, yeah, you, you're not going to be able to keep up because no. you, you can't move a whole ship as fast as you can move gimbal turrets. It, it would eliminate the point in that case. So surely that is going to still have a decent range. Surely. Well, that's that's the question I'm asking. And I know, Mudtruck and Darge, I know that the Ion is a cap killer. But if you have to bring the Ion in close to the cap ship... You don't. You don't. But you don't throw I, damage. Yeah. See, see, see. The problem is they, you're not accounting for the change in speed. Everything's way slower. So even if you're closer, it doesn't matter that you're closer because everything's slower. So you're still effectively the same distance away. There's but also not, the design philosophy the... behind Star Citizen being a game of chess. Of this beats that, but that beats that. You've got yes, to come prepared. But, but you're not like. If everything's closer and everything has gimbals, then the one thing that's supposed to be further and not have gimbals is, by def by definition, hindered. Right? Why? If everything is brought in closer you and everything its, is you slower... Just, you just increase its damage or increase its firing rate and it'll be fine. I, I well, Look... Wouldn't, you, it, it, wouldn't, shiver... it be, wouldn't its advantage be the hopefully added range? Yeah. Well, we hope. I don't know what the hopefully added range is. Like, the, I'm sure yeah, they can I, I mean, balance it. I, I'm sure they can balance it. What I want to say here is, we have seen very distinctly from a number of other ships, Freelancer, Saber Raven, Mustang, that there are ships that are not balanced and have not gotten balanced and have not seen any updates and don't fucking work. Are yeah. they are they going to address the ships that don't fit into the okay everything has gimbals now? That's my question. I would hope so. I mean, obviously you're right. They they obviously have uh, allowed some ships to languish over the years, and I still think that they will eventually get them fixed. But um, I mean, yeah, I mean it's possible. But the problem problem I, I really don't think that they're going to make those ships useless because especially those ships. Um, like the ones that you're talking about, the the, the Starfighter, for example, are incredibly, incredibly popular, and that makes a big difference. Um, so yeah, it's true. If, I, if people uh, bitch enough, like uh, Cutlass yeah. owners, then they'll get whatever. So they want. and they did, and and just to to clarify, first of all, um, anyway, sorry, I'm, 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 my my brain just no, no, went off on a tangent there. Um, they did actually specifically talk about long range engagements and the precision targeting being good for helping you hit from a really far distance. So I think that they're still expecting people to engage from what is now the long distance, but is, you know, closer, obviously. 
I think the big win here with this system, and I'm going to stop talking after this, but I think the huge win here is Star Citizen has had this problem for, um, I don't know, since Arena Commander started. So I don't know, was that 2015? So nine years that they have these gorgeous ships that you can never see because yeah. <laughs> everything was too fast and you were too far from them. Um, and it's going to be a big improvement for the player experience to be able to zoom in and see these gorgeous, huge, complex ships that you're attacking. I think that's going to be the biggest win as, like from a player perspective. Um, plus, you feel better. You're like, ah... I'm shit. I'm not doing a lot of damage here, uh, but you know, maybe I can take out a turret, you know? Yeah. So you zoom in and you blow the shit out of this turret and you're like, okay, I can't kill the ship, but at least it can't kill me as easily. now. <laughs> One of the other things that I need. Yeah. Go ahead. Shiver. You, you, you give me this thought. I, I, it's just suddenly hit me. Um, when it comes to cap ships, what sort of damage do you think, uh, single seaters will be able to do because surely they'll be able to. Will is it a case of surely will they be able to do precision targeting on yes something like an Idris? I I don't yes. know if an Idris would be yeah. big enough, maybe something bigger, but you know, will they be able to take out smaller pieces on that successfully, or will it just ping off? They'll be able yes. to. Oh, okay. uh, they're they're oh, talking no, about they're talking about being able. Yeah, they're talking about being able to use small. Uh, smaller ships to, you know, disable bits and pieces mm. of the big ones, um, and that is sort of the and that's sort of how you can help, right? Because the you're not going to be able to kill an Idris with a light fighter, it just isn't a thing. Mm. <laughs> but but you can help um, if you're fighting in a you know group with a bunch of other people. So um, that's uh, very nice. Mazer, I'm I am with you on the it fills the entire screen the precision targeting, um, and I like it's one of those you need to see how it flies because you're flying while precision targeting it might get a little confused, uh, but I think it's going to be great for like um, co-pilots for turret operators. Oh, and amazing! It, and it will at least let you see like. It'll let you be more precise. Whether it's easy or not, I don't know. But it, at least having the ability is going to be good. Um, Surely they could at, at least put um, target subsystem as a keybind. So you can just whack it out onto your HOTAS. So you can quickly go like that in and out. Well, and, and one of the things I'd be interested to see is... Um, Eric, as you were saying, like this is going to get us closer, right? Mm -hmm. And in the precision targeting mode, the hard points, like the things you can precision target, are all highlighted in red, which is nice. The question is going to be is there going to be a bind for that highlighting, even if you're out of combat, or sorry, not out of combat, out of the precision mode? Because if you're close enough to the ship, you don't need to go in precision mode to target them. Right, it would be nice if you could highlight the precision areas without being in precision mode. That would be interesting. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to make that work, or if they, or if they want to make that an exclusive feature of the precision mode. Um, the and I, I this has always been my thought. Like the precision mode obviously makes you more dangerous. Um, I do think that the I think that they want it to have that full screen thing because I think they want you to not be able to fly as well while like you're doing Darge, this. Darge is pointing out though that it does go like it right now it says zoom a hundred times and you can yeah. seem to zoom in and go out. in and out, going out, yeah. yeah. So that might be nice. It like you do a very low zoom. Also helps promote something for your co pilots do on two seaters specifically. Yeah. Well, and one oh, of the things sure. that I'm absolutely yeah, and one of the things I'm really happy about this for is I'm not a very good pilot. Uh, as anyone who has seen me fly will understand. I mean, but, you you landed 
you landed our uh, Vanguard upside down quite well. I think I actually did a great job landing that ship, quite frankly. I mean, it was very <laughs> soft landing upside down. I landed it <laughs> in one piece, mostly. Um, no, but one of the ways that I normally die <laughs> in Star Citizen is I get run into by an enemy ship that's flying straight at me while I'm trying to catch up to it. Like, it flies away, turns around, comes straight at me, and crashes into me. And I'm really hoping that the slower speeds um, and increased maneuverability will, you know, lessen that. So that I can I can die to actually being shot to death rather than being crashed into. Eris is going to die so slowly that he's going to be able to respawn, come back, and watch himself dying. <laughs> yeah, but oh, why would I watch dude. myself? If I die and respawn fast enough, could I not help myself, prevent myself from dying? No, because then you created this paradox. Well, that's okay, they make good games. Then there are two heiresses in existence. <laughs> and then you've got to sort out who's getting what. So, um, one of the things that I... this also made me think about, um, actually, I guess Shaven. Wow. I just tried to Did say Shiver and Shaven, and I just, said, I just tried to say Shiver and David, and I said Shaven. <laughs> <Maybe. laughs> that's, that's, that's what the press are calling us. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, so what I was thinking with the with the precision targeting mode is uh, eventually they're going to need an observatory on the uh, end endeavor, and I was immediately going, I bet you they're going to steal the the like crazy zoom in and zoom out technology from the uh, precision targeting for the observatory. Yep. Yep. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait to see how they implement things in the Endeavor. <laughs> cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. I have no idea when this is going to happen. <laughs> yes. Not for a long friggin' time. Um, oh, man. One of the things I wanted to say, so I really liked the majority of this episode. Uh, a lot of good detail. Mm -hmm. I like the, the sound of the, the master mode. Uh, the Like the combat master mode. Because that's basically all they talked about in this episode. What I would really like to get more information on is the travel mode. Mm -hmm. How fast is it? Is it like quantum travel? Is it like just point and click? Uh, Does it help no. us get out of atmosphere better? No, like I, no, that okay. you're talking, you're you're conflating two different things. So that's the that's the changes to quantum travel that that, that you're waiting for. That, that, when are um, those coming? I don't know. Um, when can I, I don't, when can I don't I think the changes... Actually, Dar Darge, can you help me with this? I don't think the changes to quantum travel are part of master modes. Is that correct? It's the same speed. Ugh. Yes. I want, so like, like the travel transit speed, the travel part of master modes is the is same, the same, speed. Okay. same max speed we currently have. Oh, did they say that um, tip? Okay. Okay, so the new quantum are coming in four point sure. so that's going to be the uh, what patch afterwards, right? Maybe or the patch after that. I we'll just see. i I hate travel. I hate trying. I, and you know what? Maybe the new like new star map will fix this problem, but I hate getting from one point to another point in Star Citizen, like trying to target mm -hmm. the 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 friggin' thing, and you can't target it easily, and if you move even a centimeter, it targets well, something that else. Should, that should get better right away. I'm, with the I'm, star map. I know. I'm, I'm really hoping that that... I'm, I'm assuming that that's going to get better with the star map, but I would also really like the ability to just, you know, quantum in quantum a direction. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for Get sure. off a yeah. planet easily. I hate... I hate getting off planets. I hate it. Still... It's easy to just jump in the air when you're starting to come back down, miss the planet. Oh, oh okay. I'll that's, try that. That's how how getting into orbit works. 
I thought yeah. I thought you were going to say just double jump. I, that's no, what I was quite, gonna, that's no, what I was going to say. Wow, but, you know, Shiver is always a little hard to read. I'm being realistic here, man. <laughs> just jump, miss you. All you got to do back down. All you got to do is miss the planet. That's it's what it works. It's what they yep. do. What they do. They just have to jump really, really, really hard. I uh, didn't specify yeah. a height. I'm I'm trying to not think about flying, actually. <laughs> Sorry, uh, David. If you leave now on a boat, you might get there in time. How long is the flight? It's like eight hours. Yeah. yeah oh, fuck right. off. Eight it's hours. About, um, it's about ten from here. Just go. Just go in the. Just go in the lose and knock one out. Done. Flight over. Eight oh, hours. Wow. Jeez. Wow. You have very intricate. Uh, anyway. <laughs> well, you got to set up. You know, you got to put like the lotion there, the scented the candle. Candles. Yeah. 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 Totally. Then the tape recorded whale songs. Like I, I uh, can't reach climax without a whale going. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, Shiver, how did how you did know, you get the lo the lotion in? We haven't been allowed to get lotion in since for decades. You're not allowed liquids. <laughs> Don't answer that question. <laughs> Prison pocket. Oh, that, I guess I guess where you where you hide oh, it sort of man. helps, right? Stimulates. Yep. Okay. Yep. You can get um, at least five liters inside of a human rectum. There you go. Good to know. Yeah, th that's exactly the uh, the fun fact. I'm sure everyone came here uh, looking to get today. I mean, <laughs> that's what we're here for. <laughs> so, no, if that's true. I've I've got a question that was that it's quite a lot. Like, look, I've got another question. I could go and look this up. It wouldn't even take me very much time, but I don't want to. So I'm going to ask here, and hopefully, you know, someone that's that's either smarter than me or uh, better at typing than me um, can can answer it for me. So they're getting rid of the n minus one for uh, gimbals. Yep. Ah, uh, Nightbot. Sorry, night. Sorry, Madraka. You you got it, or you want me to do it? I got it. Okay. Sorry about that, Madruk. I oh, fuck. someday, someday, I'm gonna get rid of Nightbot. Someday, someday. Uh, not today, not today. Uh, what was I gonna say? Right. Um, because you know, I I bring all things back to my least favorite favorite ship. Were the freelancers side guns N minus one? So will they get bigger under this system now that there's no more N minus yep, one? And yeah. That's fun. So they'd be what size fives now? Because were they not? F were they wait? Were they threes like the, or fours three, before? I thought there were threes before. I think there okay, were four so they threes. Four threes. So now, now there's four fours. You can get four fours. Is there still the system of like if you want, Yoo -hoo. like could you get two fives instead of four fours? You'll have to ask the weapon merchant. Not that it matters because you can't see what you're shooting in the damn thing, but yeah, blind combat's fun. Yeah. Um that's another thing actually. Maybe, maybe precision targeting will help you be able to see. <laughs> two size five mounts with two size three weapons each. Yeah, so, so they'll, now they'll have two size four weapons each. That's pretty good. Um or maybe not. I mean, I don't know, that's N minus two, so I'm not really sure why they did that. So maybe it'll just go up to size fives. In which case, you'd have four size fives. We'll see. Well, is it not because you've got two of them? Uh, no, it's pretty much size... I thought. Oh, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why, because you have two weapons on the gimbal. That might be why. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're not talking about turrets. It's the side guns. The two, si the two side guns on the Freelancer. 
<clears throat> it's not a standard very puck gimbal. I like that. I don't know. There's there's all these questions about, you know, the two ships that I own that I want answered, but I'm sure they'll get answered eventually. It will um, probably be you more. The other question I have, considering um, pew pewing, whatever happened to a missile rework? Oh, I'm sure it's coming. I think that like, it has to do with the physics right? stuff that they're working on. I think it has to do with the physics stuff they're working on, which is. I thought they were talking about that like a year ago, and then is it yeah, done? There's lots of those things. It's done. Oh, okay, cool, awesome. Do the missiles work properly now? To be honest, I haven't fired a missile in my miss uh, in a long time because I don't get in the damn thing. Well, I mean, no, I know missiles they... have been in the game for years now, but they've been trying to make them better because they're... Yeah, they, they've they're talked for so a while good. about fixing the missiles because they're not well, a very... Th th fixing might not be the right... That's it, Daj. Yeah, the rework, yeah. Yeah, because right now, as far as I'm aware, at least, the way that missiles work in game is very much the way you expect missiles to work in every fucking game that's ever had fucking missiles in a fucking game. Is it? You fire, you forget it either hits or it doesn't. Simple as that. Oh, I you know, mean, that, they wanted something happens, a bit more they're engaging. Very, they're very ineffective right now. Yes, very they want something a bit more engaging. Yeah, and something which that is understandable. Works. <laughs> but they also don't want um, missiles to be the other far end of the spectrum, where it's like it's a literal I win button. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, look, I bought the miss so that I'd have like 59 I win buttons. That was the point. <laughs> Give me back my I win buttons. <laughs> Missiles should be quite effective, and you should be able to chew through somebody's chaff and. Uh... In flares to the point mm. where they you know, don't have any defenses left. And I think that is possibly one of the problems as well of like how many chaffs and flares does everyone have? And <laughs> are people using the right ones? That is kind another. of expanding upon that in what do people, what, you know, what are the general thoughts of the sustainability of a missile based? ship you know should the longevity of that ship be comparable to another ship that hasn't gone missiles yes or no please expand if you can be asked well and i think that's the point of something like no that's that's literally the point of something like the miss the freelancer miss it's one of the few one of the only ships that can rearm its own missiles which increases its level longevity in a sustained gunfight and missile fight whereas other ships you've got like four to six missiles and then you're out of missiles and you have to land somewhere to rearm mm. right but so not every not every missile ship is going to be able to rearm itself mid-flight it, you know it is still going to have missile based weaponry but you know it's like yeah you, you get 20 missiles good luck well, and I, I think that's one of the problems with missiles to begin with right now, where people have, you know, what, like 15, 20 flares and four or five missiles on the ship. So it's, you're going to run out of missiles before your target runs out of flares. Um, yeah. And I, I, that's sort of the thing that has to be fixed is that most ships don't have a um, freelancer miss number of missiles. <clears throat> yeah. Most ships don't have 29 missiles or whatever is bristling the freelancer. Also, did they put that in game? That's cool. <laughs> that was the tidbit at the end. Oh, I like it. Oh. <sighs> That, yeah, that's awesome. Gotta love, love, gotta love a missile conveyor belt. I also, and I again, I could be wrong, but torpedoes aren't still aren't in, right? Yeah, they're there. 
Yeah, yeah. they've been in there oh, for a yeah, long no, time. No, I think, are, yeah, no, yeah. sorry, they actually work. They, they actually work better than missiles. <laughs> oh, God, look, I'm really tired and am not thinking right. Well, at least it's you're not bombs thinking make wrong. it in. It's bombs. I, I bombs are they, bombs are in. Are they? They did make okay. I th- oh, they're not just missiles that don't fire anymore. I'm pretty sure they're in. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Uh, yeah, they they I mean, and they the... make. They, there's actually there's actually a clip of bombs going off in in our clips here, um, but uh, yeah, they that's make why very, I asked. I wasn't very, sure if that was you know. Oh, they make very very big booms, very big booms, with those things. You know what I'd like to hear about at some point, even <laughs> just even oh, just for them to say yes. it's not happening. Breathe um, on rework. No, I'm I'm actually something else. Um, oh, he doesn't want to hear about the freelancer rework anymore. It's fine. The freelancer is fine. Don't touch freelancer. It's fine as it is. Eric says so. I just I We're just know it. that the cool. freelancer is not going to get reworked, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> no, what I what I genuinely like to hear about again, and it's one of those like they showed it off very briefly in a ISC a while ago. Um, so I don't know if it's something that's ever going to happen, but was the um, deforming the terrain when a bomb was dropped on it? Mm-hmm. I'd like to hear about that, if that is something that they're going to make happen. There's a few things, actually, that they talked about a long time ago and never followed up on. Like, the we see, we got rivers which is great but the mm-hmm. system that they used to develop rivers if i remember correctly actually started out as a system to develop roads we never heard about roads again we saw the terrain deforming from the bombs yeah the river guys there grenade was a launcher bit. there was a bit about the roads and the rivers um it when we saw it, they were like, oh, yeah, so I can just draw up this tool. Uh, the next stage was, now we're going to automate it and have it procedurally generated. Yeah. So maybe they're past that, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it does that. I'd just like to see some we roads. Brag. Well, well, where are we going? We don't need roads. We don't need roads. Yeah. New is, new is coming, yeah. Um, so the thing with the, the, the terrain deformation is they've always said that it's a maybe. Because of the potential issues with terrain def- terrain deformation, um, we'll see. I think it'd be cool. You you still need. A... What do you do about persistence? Do you let the players burrow through the planet? Because they will. Well, <laughs> no, but so for persistence. For persistence, does you've the, got a couple does the of different options. Explode if they try. <laughs> no, but that's that's re- actually really easy to solve. You just have a limit to how you, you know, you can deform it by fifty feet, and that's it, right? Mm-hmm. Total fifty feet down, and then it doesn't deform anymore. And but that's the still, Minecraft bedrock. Yeah, but that still allows for, um, you like know. It the after effects of a battle to be seen and as for yeah, persistence like... as for persistence one if you can do it you know without an in- an incredible like server cost you do it and if it's going to be too much of a server cost then you find the sweet spot for the longevity right like okay we're going to persist it for 10 hours and after 10 hours the next time no one is in that area, yeah, it will yeah. reset to default, right? Yeah. But it, but it, you know, it, it and you can even you can cool. even fake it. You can even fake uh, fake it, it like getting fixed over time. Like if you didn't want to just go straight from there being a battle there to there being the same thing there was before, you could also just have like the terrain slowly fell back in, or have like battle have like just scar scorch marks on the surface or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah the NPCs the NPCs go repair the ground. That's right. <laughs> uh, the nanites that were used in terraforming the planets repair them over time again. Yep. 
team of specially trained meerkats. <laughs> that, that is what the, the yeah, the nanites control the meerkats. Yeah, they got special crash helmets and everything. Yeah, there Terry you go. Pratchett. Get some dosers from Terry Pratchett's book. Uh, that just makes me think about how sad I am that Terry Pratchett's last will and testament required that all of his all of his notes on all of his hard drives uh, be run over by steamrollers. That's a very interesting desire. He didn't In want fairness, anything released after clause. his death. Probably different reasons, but... <laughs> He didn't. He didn't want, yeah. Anything. He didn't want anyone else. Which is sad, but AI, <laughs> AI, well, AI not can't fix worry. That. <laughs> Give it five years' time. Some company will be completely pissing on his grave and doing a holographic laser reconstruction tour around the world with him. Oh yeah. man. Sponsored by Pepsi. <laughs> of all well, people. actually, no. Didn't that didn't that happen recently? Some stupid AI people. Recently, did, it's happened. You, before, like they had no, no, two no, pack no. on fucking years ago. Yeah, they but, had no, fucking. No, shimmer, shimmer, oh shimmer. god, what's his name? Um, um, the guy Sh who shimmer? got OJ Simpson off for murder. Uh, the Cardassians' father. Same guy. Sorry. They very recently, there was a bunch of people who claimed they had created, or, well, claimed they had created a George Carlin special with AI and recreated George Carlin and tried to, you know, produce Who's and... That? and and it turned out it actually wasn't even written by AI. They had done it themselves, and it was horrible. And uh, I think they're getting sued, but as it should be. Yeah, uh, who, who, who is George? Carl? <gasps> Carl? You're joking, right? No. Oh my god. It hurts me. Okay, okay. Shiver, you've got some learning to do. <sighs> Jesus Christ, you've got some learning to do. That, like, that that's painful. one of the, one of the best comedians ever. Yep. I I I, I is is he as good yep. as Sean Locke or Johnny Vegas? He's, just go, he's I, I'm not just just go watch yeah. something by George Carlin. I think you'll the, the, love. I did I did also Carlin. say one of the best. I'm not going to get into who is the best, but George <laughs> Carlin because because uh, quite frankly, the best comedic performance by anyone anytime uh there are two winners uh it's either the four yorkshiremen or uh who's on first by uh Abbott, what is it Abbott and Estelle? anyway uh go go watch some church card yes that's your your assignment for for tomorrow yeah <laughs> Um. Oh man, probably one of the biggest regrets of my life was uh, I think a year before he died, I had a chance to go see him, no. and I, uh, I, but I was going to be the only tickets that were available were at like the very, 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 very back, like right, you know, and I was like, ah, do I want to spend a shit ton of money to go sit in the very back, and I, I didn't go. And then he died, and I was like, son of a bitch, I should have gone to the freaking performance. Oh. That's like, I, I found, uh, like, a couple of years ago, one of, now one of my favorite bands in existence, and only found out after I had found this band that, like, a couple months before I found them, the lead singer slash songwriter had committed suicide oh and brutal i'm still Which kind of sad about uh frightened rabbit 
Oh, that sucks. I don't know the band, but that sucks. They're, so much. They were, well, they are great. Um, anyway, um, I can see that no. we've run out of Star Citizen things to talk about. Does anyone have any questions before we end? Is anyone, uh, I mean, I do interpretive dance frequently. Um, this is my, I am a teapot. Oh, that just give me an hour long thing to watch. Thanks, Taj. <laughs> That's amazing. Good. I did not fight Nidris. Um, probably not gonna fight Nidris. That sounds like way too much work. He he's not talking about Star Citizen. He wants to know if you walked up to Idris Elba and thought you'd try your luck, and you were like, "Oh, no, not worth it. Not worth it." <laughs> that's that's like um, there's there's a. Twitter exchange I very much like where there's some you know ex MMA guy that's taken up commenting and some some person on Twitter is like you friggin suck you know stop commenting and the guy's like do you want to say that to my face and and the person's like no that's why I said it on Twitter I don't want to get the shit beat out of me <laughs> obviously and not going to say it to your face I'm safe here really and the MMA, MMA fighter replied fair enough yeah, it's a great experience. I love it. I like the one. Um, oh shit! There are these two blokes on Facebook, and one of them's—he's not the most intelligent of guys. And the other one's just winding him up. But everything he says, and I can't remember what he talks about. But this guy gives a film review, and he ends off with saying, "Yeah, good film, five out of seven. And the guy very yes. berates him, and he's like, "What the?" You do the five out of seven. You know what a weird rating system. Great film though, but five out of seven. And he even refers back to it later by saying, "Oh, I made myself this cup of tea early. It's brilliant. Five out of seven. <laughs> yeah, keep an eye out for that one. That was a fucking great one. <laughs> Memes. We love them. Uh, I wonder if comedians in the seven. future will just come out or they'll just be there with like, like, here is this meme I have created. Now laugh. There's this other <laughs> meme I have created. Now laugh. That was made by AI. You stole it. Yeah. Yeah. You stole it from the AI. <laughs> oh. I actually just saw an interesting quote that, uh, I mean, we could probably talk for hours about, but uh, we only call it AI. We only call things AI until they start being used like in practice because we've got like the AI that we're talking about now is large language models. It's not actually AI. And we've got other things that do the same job in, you know, the, well, the machine learning that Google uses to find the fastest routes, the playlist mm, stuff, mm. like the music stuff that decides what you're going to listen to next. Like we've been doing all of this shit for decades and we're only talking about this as AI because there's no productive I way always, for it to work. I always thought of it as like, rather than being a consciousness, it was like in this instance, it was, you know, a very dumbed down of just automating of tasks, just like simple machinery yeah. is you know, an, a yeah. form of artificial intelligence simply because it's, you know, like the robots on a car manufacturing line. They're artificial intelligence simply because, you know, they're doing something that needs an intelligence to run, but it's not a but sentient it's, intelligence. It's not. You couldn't it, have a fucking not... chipmunk sit there and make you <laughs> Volvo, could you? But it's not intelligence. It's artificial. Like, it's, it's programmed reactions, right? It's not an Why actual did Simon sell us? Anyway, we could we could talk about this for a long time, but uh, one one important thing to note is the immense environmental impact of bullshit like AI and crypto, uh, fucking tech bros literally ruining the planet to make a buck, and I hate them all, and they should all fucking burn. Yep, we could and burn them. What's on for uh... power generation? We could. That would work. Um, Shiver, what's on the Table of Horrors this week? I think we're back this week uh, on Friday, I guess, midnight, technically. Or let's go with 
Friday, uh, 11.59 UTC, I hope. It might be half far. Anyway, over on twitch.tv slash Table of Horrors, uh, we've got V5 Vampire Masquerade Chronicle uh, starting to come to an end. Ooh. Ooh. That's been running for, like, ever. This one's a year. Cool. About it's a year. pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, I think I will leave you all with the passing note that, uh, you know, we should all be considering bringing back guillotines. Um, seems seems uh, legit. Yeah. Uh, I have I mean, a few notes I'd like to share. Yeah. A. B. A. B. E. And of course, E. I, I particularly, I particularly like the combination of A C A B. I think that flows beautifully. I read notation tablature. I coming at me with these notes like a fucking musician. Like, I don't know. I just fucking hear a fucking string. Uh, love you all. Thanks for watching us do whatever the fuck this is every week. Uh, come watch us do whatever the fuck this is next week. And go watch Shiver do whatever the fuck he does every week. Um, and uh, also... Oh, boy. Um, Set, get AI to make a picture of the queen eating a banana. Done.